Okay, there's going to be a lot of information on this one video. We're talking about quadratic forms. So the different forms for a quadratic function. Now, we have basically three. Standard, factored, and vertex. This is three names for the same shape. So just because we call it in factored, standard, or vertex, the shape doesn't change. The parabola doesn't change. It's just a different name. And we get different information for it. It's kind of like I'm Mr. Acosta to my students. I am dad at home. And on the street, they call me, hey, baby. In any case, three different ways of calling the same person, three different ways of calling the same parabola. Um, a bracket x minus s, x minus t, that is factor form. A x squared plus bx plus c, that is standard form. And a x minus h squared plus k, it's vertex form. You notice right away that the letter a appears in all of them because a gives us the shape. And like I just said, the shape does not change no matter what form you're calling this parabola. The shape, if the a value is positive, it means it was going to open up. And this is a, a silly and easy way to remember which way it goes. If it's a negative, it's going to open down. And then we know that if the a value is bigger than 1, it's going to be a stretch because you multiply that thing by a bigger number, it goes up faster. So it goes gets skinnier. And if it's between 0 and 1, it's going to be a compression because let's say it's half. Well, I used to do 2 squared was 4, but now I multiply it half and it goes down to 2, and that means it gets wider. So that's an easy one for all of them. What else do I get from standard form? Well, I'm going to get easily the y-intercept. Now, the y-intercept, you get it by plugging in x equals 0 in any form, not just this one. It's just that in this way it comes up right away because that would disappear and that would disappear. But on the other forms, you just plug in f equals 0, work it out, and that gives you the y-intercept. It's not always the last number. It's only the last number if it's standard form. That's all you get, the y-intercept. From factored form, you get the zeros. How do you get the zeros? You need to find a number that plug into x that will make the bracket go to 0. So in general, it ends up being the opposite of what you have there, unless you have some fractions. But in general, you have to put a number there that will make the bracket go to 0, and the same over there. And lastly, for vertex, you get the vertex, which is h and k. Again, the x for this will be the opposite of that one, or the, the number that will make the bracket go to zero, and the same value you got over here. So you got h and k on the top. Now, because the vertex is right in the middle, the axis of symmetry goes through the middle. So you know that the axis of symmetry is x equals h. You have to put an equation on it, x equals and a number, to denote that it's a vertical line, not just the value. Not so for the optimal value, which means just the top value, the bottom value, the max or the min, which is just say it's going to be your k. So you get more information from the vertex from than the others. But let's look at all the forms one at a time with an example with numbers so you see what we mean. Let's say you've got standard form. So half x squared plus 4x minus 5. What can we tell right away? Well, the shape is a is equal to half. It's positive, so it opens up. Um, it's because it's a half, it's also a compression, okay, which I did not mention here, but it's a compression. Is it going to be a maximum or a min, the vertex? Well, since it opens up, the vertex is going to be at the bottom. That means that the vertex is going to be a minimum value, okay? Y-intercept, well, I just plug in F0, so X equals 0, and everything will disappear, and I'm just going to be left with a minus 5. With this information, I can't really graph anything from it. All I know is that it's going to be a y-intercept with minus 5, and it opens up. So that's kind of as far as I can get. And I can't get a lot from standard form. Let's try another one. So let's say we try factored form. A lot of information, but let's go step by step. y is equal to minus 2, x minus 3, x plus 1. What's the shape? I just look at the a value. The a value is minus 2. Minus 2 is negative, therefore it opens down. Very good. Um, it's a stretch because that value is bigger than 1, so I'm going to be multiplying it by 2. Great. What about the x-intercepts? Well, I need to figure out the number that will make this go to 0. So in this case, it would be 3. And in this case, it would be negative 1. So those are my two zeros. So I can start plugging stuff in. So 3 and minus 1. So let's say that's 3 and that's minus 1. For my zeros. I'm just sketching it for now. Axis of symmetry. Well, the axis of symmetry is going to be right in between those two points, which means I can get the average of the two. If I get the average of 3 plus minus 1 divided by 2, that gives me a 1. 
So now I have the axis of symmetry as being x equals to 1. Okay, this is matching flowing along. Um, the, x, the axis of symmetry actually goes through the vertex. That is the x of my vertex. So in order to find the vertex, I already have the x, I just need to find the y. How am I going to find the y? Well, this function gives me all the y values as long as I give it the x value. Since I have the x value being 1, I'll just plug in 1, and that's going to be minus 2 times 2 is minus 4, minus 4 times 2 gives us 8. So does this match? Well, an 8 over there would make this function open down, and we it's true, it opens down. So, so far it checks. So let's say this is 3, that is negative 1, and that is 8. Okay, so our y-intercept should be around here somewhere. And how do we find the y-intercept? By plugging f at 0. Because we know that the y-intercept will happen when x is equal to 0. Just plug it in there, and it doesn't come up automatically less in standard form. Just plug it in, minus 2, 0, minus 3, so that's going to be minus 3 times 1 times minus 2 is equal to 6. And that seems to make perfect sense to have a 6 there to try to join my parabola which I'll let you guys do it because I'm going to do a poor job at it. All right, so that was standard form. Sorry, factored form and standard form. And let's look at the last one, which is the vertex form. I know I'm going kind of fast, so you want to be pausing this and making sure that you understand every step because that's going to happen in only class. y is equal to 3x minus 1, the whole thing squared, plus 2. Okay, what do I know? The shape. The a is 3. 3 is positive. Positive means it's a smile. A smile means it opens up. Because it's a 3 and it's bigger than 1, that means it's a stretch. That makes sense. Nothing to sketch yet. Um, the vertex is at 1 and 2. How do I get 1 and 2? Well, 1 will make this bracket go to 0, and 2 is the number that I have right here. And that's just it. So it's 1 and 2. There's my vertex. And I know that it's going to open up, so it's going to go up that way. Okay, so let me just put some numbers. That's 2, and that's 1. Okay, I got the vertex. What about the axis of symmetry? Well, the axis of symmetry goes right through the vertex. So I have that x is equal to 1 already from the vertex. Do I have the optimal value? Yes, I have the optimal value because that's the 2. That's as low as it's going to go because it opens up, therefore that's going to be a minimum. What about the y-intercept? Just like before, plug in f at 0. So plug in my x is equal to 0 and see what the y value is. When we do this over here, that's minus 1 squared is just 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. So 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, I only have two points. It opens up so it matches. Because that's the axis of symmetry, I know that I'm going to have a mirrored point on the other side to be able to draw a sketch of my parabola. Okay, so this parabola would look something like this. Something like that. 